Hey guys, gonna do a quick recap of the Major League Fishing Pro Circuit event that we just wrapped up on the James River uh, in Richmond, Virginia. Pretty cool fishery, first time going there. Uh, it's a tidal fishery, it's very big, lots of creeks uh, and rivers coming off of that. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge fishery. There was no way I was gonna be able to see it in two days of practice. So that was actually my first time being there. So going in the event, uh, pretty good point standings, you know, um, and so needed a good event to kind of maintain that and was really looking forward to it. You know, it's a shallow water fishery, um, you know, grass cover in it, um, lots of wood cover, cypress trees, and you know, it, it fished really big, a lot of boat docks as well, a lot of current, you know, the tide fluctuated, um, the water level, uh, several times a day or twice a day actually and you know it would fluctuate you know two to four feet uh, depending on where you were at so uh, we had pretty good tides throughout the event where we were able to hit uh, prime water level um, throughout the tournament so you know depending on where you were fishing you know high tide might be a good thing you know if you're fishing uh, real shallow and trying to get back into an area you may need a higher tide to access that area and to get those fish in there and, and to get them to bite. Uh, what I was keying on, in on was uh, low tide situations and usually on a tidal uh, uh, system, whether that, uh, you know, no matter where you're at, whether it's Potomac, James River, Delaware River, uh, any kind of tidal situation, um, you know, you really want to uh, kind of key in on those lower tides and, and any kind of moving water. And you can either stay in an area or run the tide. And normally, you know, we fish a lot of these places and they have uh, like Potomac River, for example, has big grass beds. And you're able to kind of stay in those areas. You know, once you find a productive area, you can stay in there throughout the tides and kind of adjust with the with the different tides and just kind of stay in there and, and try to stay on top of those fish and then capitalize when the fish actually bite. Um, you know, a lot of these creeks I was fishing in this uh, uh, at the James River were smaller and, you know, you could fish them fairly fast. Uh, there was a lot of moving water. And, um, you know, I got bit on several different tides, both an incoming tide and a low outgoing tide. Uh, but, you know, the, the whole key was having some moving water to kind of position those fish, you know, just like any river system, uh, you know, behind cover or, you know, on certain pieces of cover, um, you know, to kind of get out of the current and let, let that bait uh, come to them, you know, let the feeding opportunities come to them instead of, uh, you know, chasing down a meal. So they, they like to wait for easy meals. They set up just like a river. So I love fishing current. I love fishing river systems. So in this one, uh, being as it was a huge body of water, um, you know, a real popular area was the Chickahominy River. It's about a 60 mile run. It gets really crowded, but it has some really big fish in it. And I believe the tournament was actually won out of there. So, um, but I, I didn't want to fish in a crowd. Uh, the, there's been a lot of tournaments won on that particular chain elsewhere or on that particular river system elsewhere. So I decided I was gonna to try to get away from the crowds a little bit, uh, try to learn um, you know, the area from takeoff, you know, down about 30, 40 miles, uh, learn as much of that area as I could in that amount of time and decided I was gonna to try to actually run the tide. So um, you know, I tried to, tried to chase lower water in that uh, tournament and I, um, you know, to do so, I would run far further down south in the morning. So I'd run to my farthest point and then kind of work my way back to check in. And that enabled me to kind of hit places along the way back uh, at the proper tide. And I thought I did a pretty good job of uh, doing that, but I did have lackluster afternoons. I mean, I hit most of my spots on what I would uh, consider pretty good uh, tide uh, situation or pretty good timing. Um, you know, there was moving water and the water was low in both outcoming and incoming, depending on, you know, where I was at. 
which, uh, you know, I thought I did a good job of uh, doing that and running the tide, but I had really good mornings up until about noon. And then I kind of lost track of the fish a little bit. The first day of the tournament, I, I caught a, a key fish or two late and upgraded. Uh, but, you know, the name of the game in this event was, the, you know, it was easy to catch fish. At least it was for me in a lot of the areas I was fishing, easy to catch keepers. But the quality was a little bit harder to come by. I had some missed opportunities. There's a lot of barnacles uh, in a few of the areas I was fishing on some of the cover that was underwater. And I mean, if you tried to set the hook, you were breaking that fish off. So uh, I did a good job of landing a lot of those, but I got on a couple bad runs where I broke some fish off and there was really nothing I could do about it. I upsized my line tremendously, um, you know, based on the techniques I was throwing. I was throwing a lot heavier line than I would normally and uh you know still broke a few of those fish off and it was just uh nothing you could do about it those things were really sharp and uh you know a few of those fish i i think were key, some key fish that might have helped me out so i didn't miss a check by much i ended up finishing i think like 81st i want to say which you know five six spots out of the paycheck but i'll uh, show you how i did it so i fished um, a lot of my big fish I thought we're gonna come out off of the main river and uh, boat docks, pylons, uh, current brakes, you know, uh, jetties, things like that. I was throwing a crankbait, I was throwing my Trophy Bass Company uh, Pro Jig and the current uh, was real heavy. So I was throwing, trying to get baits that would just kind of glide along in the current and uh, try to keep them out of the current brakes. So, uh, really kept it pretty simple. Started out in the creeks in the morning and then shifted to uh, kind of the main river in the afternoons, uh, trying to key in on some bigger fish. So in the mornings, I would uh, start off with a Trophy Bass Company Ozark Flash Spinnerbait, white chartreuse, 3 8 ounce. I, man, it was fun. In practice, I caught a bunch of big fish on it and day one of the tournament they were really eating this thing good i i ended up putting a hayabusa trailer hook on there it's an awesome little trailer hook catch a lot of fish on there it really doesn't affect the action of the baits it's non-intrusive it doesn't tangle up um, stays fixed so that uh, that's a great addition to any spinnerbait but uh, this spinnerbait was awesome you know three eighths ounce smaller blades so it went through the current really well um, you know really snag resistant I was able to fish it really fast and efficiently uh, flutter it uh, when I got around, you know, some little current breaks and good opportunities. So I fished it a little bit erratically, but fished it around duck blinds, fished it on little corners and creek bends where there was some cover like laydowns and cypress trees, things like that. And uh, really any kind of current breaks, little uh, canals and, and stuff coming off of, uh, or, or creeks coming out of these marshes that were draining into the main creek. Um, you know, so a lot of different targets, um, but was really keying in on that in the mornings. That first morning especially was really good on it. Caught 30 or 40 fish and a bulk of my weight on that. Then in the afternoons, I'd try to take it to the main river, fishing around pylons, boat docks, things like that, uh, and, and current breaks as well, and, and catch some of those active fish. Um, should have slowed down probably a little bit in the afternoons when the bike got stale and thrown a worm and a uh, jig around a little bit because that's exactly um, that's exactly what I did uh, late in the day on day two and uh, oh, I'm sorry all day on day two and then <clears throat> late in the day I picked up just a 3 16 ounce weight Hayabusa uh, offset worm hook that's the uh, 114 model I believe 3 yacht 3 16 ounce Bass Pro tungsten 20 pound um, Bass Pro Shops 100% fluorocarbon on a uh, six gill Mayaka, eight to one gear ratio to pick up the slack on those fish in the current and get, the, get a good hook set, seven foot medium heavy, kind of pitch it around those boat docks um, and shallow cover real accurately. Um, but anyways, it was the uh, Lucky Strike, or I'm sorry, uh, Tackle HD and also uh, Bass Pro Shops, the Tackle HD Trick Sticks, I ran out of those and picked up the Bass Pro Shops um, uh, stick worm here. I believe this is called a sticko. So uh, just a just a little stick bait on that 3 16 ounce weight. Uh, Texas rigged, was really productive, fished around cover, caught a bulk of my fish the second day on that, flipping it around the same kind of cover. Anything I came to, whether it was a duck blind, a lay down, 
um, you know, boat dock. I was just trying to key in on those uh, current breaks and low water opportunities. Um, you know, caught a ton of fish on it. Uh, caught a ton of fish both days, which made it a really fun tournament. Um, I had two places that were really key and then I also uh, were infested with barnacles that I broke off some key fish, but I could throw in there and literally catch them every single cast on, no matter what I threw. And, um, you know, uh, another bait for me was this 3 8 ounce Trophy Bass Company um, Pro Jig. I trimmed it down a little bit, fished it with a couple different trailers, and, um, you know, just tried to keep it uh, small, compact, and fish it in the current. Uh, one of the places, uh, was some underwater stumps outside of a marsh drain that had current coming from two different directions. It was an ideal setup, very cool spot, caught a bunch of fish there. Unfortunately, they shrunk on me a little bit from what they were in practice. And then the few decent bites I got there, um, you know, I broke a couple of those off. And so that was, that was kind of unfortunate. And the thing about running a tide is, you're constantly kind of having to hustle and on the move. So uh, hindsight's 2020. Looking back, I wish I would have stayed in a couple of the creeks I started in and kind of just caught everything that bit. You know, just fished in there hard all day, upgraded, 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 and I think I could have got uh, a paycheck. But I, I started to, because I just missed it barely, and um, I started to uh, run the main river in the afternoons because I had some really big bites in practice doing that. And it just didn't really work out for me. It worked out for some other anglers. I saw some guys on live doing well, fishing some of the same exact boat docks and current breaks and stuff that I was. Uh, so timing is everything on, on, on these rivers. And I was a little off on that, obviously, in a few places. But uh, the jig was really, really good. Uh, I was fishing uh, around on the main river uh, late in the afternoons, fishing that and the spinnerbait around the boat docks. Seven foot six. Heavy action siren, that's my favorite jig rod. Eight to one gear ratio, Homar reel from six gill. They got great deals on those. Um, you know, buy one, get one sales all the time. So uh, great great products, love their stuff. And uh, if you're in the market for a new rod and reel, be sure to go check them out. And then in the mornings, uh, one of my favorite all time baits to throw, and especially in any tournament situation, because you can cover a lot of water, was the buzz bait. This is the Tackle HD uh, Worldwide Buzzer. It uh, hits the head, makes makes a lot of racket. Again, the, the uh, Hayabusa trailer hook on there with the uh, Hayabusa uh, keeper there. It's an awesome little trailer hook keeper. Keeps it from moving around, keeps it from catching the legs on that toad. Uh, awesome little addition to a buzz bait, spinner bait, or anything like that. So that's a really cool, innovative design, cool thing that they've done on the trailer hooks. And, um, you know, it's kind of impossible to fish any other trailer hook effectively uh, with this trailer on a buzz bait, in my opinion, with it flopping around back there. So uh, that that trailer keeper is a really cool, cool deal. So check those out from Hayabusa. Uh, this was on a seven foot six medium heavy Mayaka rod. That's my favorite uh, rod for a big top water, uh, like a plopper, buzz bait, something like that. Um, and 50 pound braid on that and uh, eight to one gear ratio so I could reel that fast and catch up with the fish that uh, bit the lure. Uh, but fun tournament, super fun tournament. Um, been using lithium batteries this year. Uh, X Beyond 360 is the brand that I'm using. I've got three 12 volt uh, batteries in the back of there and these AGMs are awesome. We were running in really uh, swift current this year. I'm out on a lot of guide trips and uh you know this is the first year i've been running lithiums they've been absolutely flawless the x beyond 360s uh from wholesale batteries incorporated you can get them in kansas city you can get them in st louis these guys are great um great company great to work with and they can actually uh, get you set up help you outfit your boat get your battery in your car whatever you need they got it uh, so check out Wholesale Batteries. I'll drop a link in there. And the x 360 batteries as well. They come with um, an awesome warranty. I believe it's a 10-year warranty on those batteries. So um, you guys, they're safe and uh, they're flawless. So nothing you have to worry about as far as that. So if you're interested in a lithium, check them out for sure. But uh, James River, fun place to fish. If you get a chance to fish there, go there. You're gonna catch a ton of them. Unfortunately, this one, I came up a little bit shy of a paycheck, 
but um, you know, really fun, fun fishery. Caught, you know, probably 50, 60 fish at least every day and uh, caught them in rapid succession when uh, the bite was on. But fun fishery, fun time, and I'll be sure to do some more of these uh, tournament recaps. We got a few more left. Next one's Lake Champlain. Then we're going to Truman Lake here at uh, around my house, so only about an hour from the house, a lake that I grew up on. So super excited about fishing a Toyota Series event over there. But thanks for checking these videos out. We'll be sure to pump out a few more of them. And we also have some more tournament videos coming your way. Thanks guys.